All right. Thank you, Mr. Chapman. That's what you go by here. Um, I've known Mr. Chapman since I was 22 years old. Uh, he gave me my first job. I had to submit a writing sample uh, for a bilingual reading program for uh, K2 readers. And he goes, go write a story. And I wrote a story and uh, for our first graders. And then a, a day later, I got my first job. And uh, wow, and now <laughs> and Mr. Chapman's here. So I need a moment because uh, when you, you know, life, it's, it's been 30 years. And I thought I would be, when I was 22, I thought I was going to be the next uh, greatest sports writer in the history of the world. Um, I ran through some issues uh, in Boston. I used to write for the Boston Globe, and I told the Boston Globe, I said, you need people like me. This was in 1991, right before Horton Mifflin. And they're like, why? <laughs> you know, why, 21-year-old person? And I said, well, I'm from Puerto Rico, and I'm a Spanish speaker and an English speaker. I'm bilingual. I can edit. I can write. I really love baseball. And the Red Sox are going to get all these bilingual, you know, these Dominican and Puerto Rican players eventually, and you're going to need people like me to talk to them. And this was in 1991 when there was no, like, Latino players on the Red Sox. And they're like, you're crazy. Like, we don't, we're not going to give you a job. And then um, I wrote to the sports editor of the Boston Globe about 10 years later. I'm like, David Ortiz, Pedro Martinez, Manny Ramirez. Um, I told you so. <laughs> and, you know, this is what it is. This is. One of the things that I always say to myself is that you might have plans, right? And, you know, and I, I need to acknowledge that we are in privileged spaces. I've also been in elite spaces, having gone to... Um, private Jesuit high school in the Bronx, um, got into uh, undergraduate school in Cambridge, you know, down the road, um, got to cover hockey as a Puerto Rican man. Uh, they won the national championship in 1989, and I fell in love with writing. I fell in love with, with sports writing. And like I said, I thought I was going to do all this, and then all of a sudden the doors were shut because of representation and, and because of sort of institutionalized uh, racism. Um, I can say that now at 53 years old. At 21 years old, if I said that, I was seen as a hothead, as you know, a rabble rouser, as a radical. Um, a lot of words have been, taught, uh, have been um, tossed my way. So this is why I'm very thankful that Mr. Chapman believed in my voice. And I, I did publishing. I believe that the world was going to become more bilingual and more Spanish speaking in this country. And we went through some very tough times when, especially in California in the late 90s, where a lot of people in California said that English language speakers, that, you know, this country wasn't going to become bilingual. And we knew the future of this country. And it's, for me, my career has always been one of about fighting the inevitable. Like, the inevitable was happening. I was fighting, always fighting the doubters. So a lot of, a lot of what I learned when I, when, when I got to work with Mr. Chapman and others at Houghton was to always believe in your voice. But, you know, I thought I, I had found it. You know, I told, you know, I was, by the time I was in my mid-30s, I, uh, I was happily married. I live, in, I live right outside of Boston on the South Shore. I got through, I, I don't know about you guys, but I, I got through you know, the South Shore, North Shore traffic today, which is always interesting. Um, and I thought I had it all, right? I, I did everything right. I did everything right. And I'm sure all you are doing everything right right now. You're in a great space. You have an incredible future. Um, you've lived through this pandemic that I think is going to make you stronger as a generation. Um, I can say that because I have two uh, 
my two kids um, are one of, one of them in college and one just graduated and I saw that. I mean, I saw my, my high school senior go through the last couple of years um, and it's tough. It's tough, right? And you probably have plans that you're like, okay, I'm gonna take this path, right? I'm gonna go there and nothing, you know, I got it. And then all of a sudden the world's gonna come crashing down. And I don't, I don't wanna say that you expect that because I, I, I really, really never wish bad things to anybody, <laughs> but things happen. And the question for you all is, what do you do in response to that? I was lucky and I was fortunate to have people like Mr. Chapman and others who helped create the character for me to push through it, who dealt with compassion and humility and belief and love. And I know that sounds kind of hokey now, you know, because I, was, I used to be in there when I was your age and I'd be like, someone was speaking and be like, you're crazy. Like, what are you talking about? Like, stop with the Buddhism. My dad, you know, my dad, who's um, this wild Puerto Rican man. Uh, I'm, glad you, I'm glad you quoted, you know, the Buddhist quote. Because my dad kept saying that to me forever. And I'd be like, oh, Poppy, what are you doing to me? Like, what are you doing? And it took, uh, it took the challenges and the losses to realize that being present every day is a gift. And by, by pushing through that, I was able to discover where my passion was when I was sort of that teenage kid who wanted to be the sports writer. So I went back into journalism. And I got a little bit lucky because given that Facebook and Twitter um, that came out in the aughts, I was able to have e early access to that. I used my journalism in digital media and I kind of went to a journalism school without paying for a journalism school. My journalism school was Facebook. And I saw the issues of representation greatly um, in front of my face in the Latino community. And I saw that, that what digital media was gonna do was democratize voices in this space. And if you can push representation, you could actually change media. So when I was watching The Daily Show in 2011, I was like, oh, Jon Stewart, he's a rebel. But he doesn't have any Latinos on the show. So I wrote Latino rebels and I went to bed. And I woke up and I'm like, I woke up the next day and I was like, that's not a bad idea. And I just created my own site. And I said to myself, I wanna see my voice in this space. I want my community to be represented. And I'm, and I'm not gonna seek permission anymore. And from then on, from 2011, I created this site. And by 2012, I was on CBS News talking about the Latino vote in 2012. And I was like, well, that's interesting. And now when I look in the last 10 years of this journey, that if I had given up at 35, if I had given up, if I had said, you know what? Life is unfair. I'm, my entire path has been broken. I can't push forward. I would never, I, I, I wouldn't be talking about the fact that we won a Pulitzer three months ago, right? So I'll leave you with this. Enjoy the journey. Some of it is amazing. You know, my son's a soccer player. He plays in college. So when I heard about the soccer news and the conference things, I got all, I was like, oh, good, good for Brooks. You know, because I, I, I am that soccer parent. Enjoy that journey, enjoy the ups and downs. There's gonna be times when that journey's not gonna be fun. And it's in those moments where you're gonna rely on people to pick you up, people that you don't even expect to, who surprise you and believe in you. And that's why for me, as, as you look at this entire, the journey that I've gone through, I wake up every day and thank myself that I'm here. 
And as much as my dad told me that I would, would be like this and I totally resisted him, I wake up every morning very thankful for my dad, for Mr. Chapman, for other of my colleagues who have always believed in me. Because in the end, that is the fuel that's gonna get you going and you're gonna find that voice. And it's so much easier when, when the journey's great, it's those moments when it's not that's gonna really show who you are. So I wish you the best. I wish you an incredible life of success, love, friendship, companionship, joy, celebrations, because you all deserve it. But just remember, you can't do it all yourself. Love yourself, but also love the people who support you. And I'm incredibly thankful that, that Mr. Chapman invited me today. So thank you so much for your time.